Hello, welcome to Studio Euphemia. Today I'm going to show you how I made this illustration style photographic digital collage. On top of Photoshop for this project, I used my Wacom Intuos tablet to do the illustration slash painting effects that you'll see. It's not necessary, you can still use your trackpad or your mouse, but I do highly recommend this tool or some kind of tablet to do digital painting or illustration effects. It really helps out. The first thing I'm going to do is bring in my source image that I found on unsplash.com. They have a lot of great free images to use. Definitely recommend checking them out. Now I'm sizing up my image to fit our composition and just moving it around until I find a placement that I like. I'm wanting to separate the figure from the background, so I'm coming up to choose our selection tool, and then up at the top, choose select subject. Photoshop's going to do the work of selecting our subject for us, as you can see with the marching ants around our figure. It's left out some of our selection, so now I'm going in to correct that. I still have our selection tool selected, and using a combination of the plus and minus signs up at the top there, I'm adding and removing any parts of the selection that Photoshop has made to correct it so that our figure is selected properly. So I'm just dragging that around the edges of her hand at the moment to correct some of the selection. Photoshop left out a little bit of her arm and hand here because it's so close in color to the background. So I'm just correcting that. I have my screen quite zoomed in to do this so I can really see the details. It's missed this area around her hair so going to fix that and I'm going to smooth out some of the selection around her face. Again, because this is so close in tone to the background, Photoshop wasn't able to pick up the edges quite as well. Any parts I want to deselect, I have the minus sign selected. You can also hold option down while holding your selection key and that will remove selections but you can use the plus and minus signs up at the top to add and subtract any parts of the selection you don't want. Again around her arm here we are going to need to make some corrections. So I've added a bit where her arm wasn't selected at the bottom and now I'm deselecting some at the top where it selected a bit of that brick wall. Now that I'm happy with that, I'm going to come over to the Layers panel, and with that layer selected, I'm going to choose Layer Mask, and there we have a layer mask on our figure now. So I'm going to click on that Layer Mask thumbnail, and come up to the top and choose Select and Mask. That will bring us to a new window, and now we're going to further refine our selection to make it a bit more realistic. So I'm just using the quick selection tool and I'm wanting to deselect that little bit between her body and her arm where the brick wall is still showing. You can do this a few different ways so I'll show you a couple ways. We'll choose the brush tool and we're going to change the brush size. I've just right clicked on the screen and that's brought up this little menu where I can change the brush size. And because I'm wanting to deselect this area, I'm going to come up to the top and choose the minus sign. And now you can see as we're painting, it's deselecting that brick wall area. It's a little bit tough with the brush tool to get a really refined selection. So I'm going to come over and choose our select tool and our minus sign so that it's removing some of the selection and just dragging it over that area and that makes it a bit more of a clean selection. I'm also wanting to refine the edge around 
the figure's hair, so I've chosen the Refine Edge Brush tool. Again, right-clicking on the image brings up this little menu where we can change the size of the brush. You can also do that up at the top. And now I'm just dragging that Refine Edge Brush tool around the figure's hair, and that what that will do is help make the hair look a little bit more realistic and less rough and jagged. I'm going to drag that around her entire edge of her hair. And sometimes it'll bring in a bit of selection that we don't want. So I'm choosing the brush tool now and I'm just brushing out a little bit of that area that I didn't want to be included. So you'll find you'll want to use all of these tools for different problems when you're in this window and they all can help you really refine your selection in different ways so it's, it's pretty fun to experiment with those. I'm finding some of the selections on the figure are a bit rough and jagged so at this point I'm trying different tools to see what works to fix that problem. I'm using the brush tool here to add a bit of the selection that Photoshop seems to have missed and that's really smoothed out that edge on her arm. I'm going to do the same thing around her hand here just to smooth out some of those jagged edges of our selection. Again, on her arm here, that edge is looking a bit rough. So I have our brush tool selected with the minus sign that's going to deselect some of these areas and just smooth out that edge a little bit. So it's just a matter of going in slowly and carefully and refining some of those edges. Again, changing the brush size helps to get into some of these really small areas. And really just take your time refining all these edges, it'll make a, a big difference in terms of the selection looking more realistic in the end. So now I'll zoom back out and have a look and I think that's looking pretty good. I'm going to come over to our sliders on the right here under global preferences, global refinements, and I'm going to add a bit of smoothing, a little bit of a feather, and a little bit of a contrast and that all just refines the selection even one step further. We'll click OK and we're back in our original window. Now I'm going to zoom in and have a look and it's looking pretty good. I'm going to delete that layer, the first layer, because we've created a new one when we've made this refinement. So now we're just left with our new refined layer. And I'm coming back over to choose our selection tool. And I'm choosing quick selection tool from that menu. I'm dragging that over the figure's t-shirt. I want to just select her t-shirt at this point. So I'm just dragging it over any area where her t-shirt is. And I'm going to zoom in and check how that selection is looking. And I just want to refine that a little bit where Photoshop maybe has 
miss some of those selections, so I'm using the plus and minus signs again up at the top to add or deselect any areas that Photoshop didn't pick up on. So I'll zoom in and we can see above her shoulder there, there's a little bit that I don't want included that has the white background in it. So I'm going to choose the minus sign and then I'm dragging my selection tool over that area and you can see it's corrected it. So it follows the line of the t-shirt better. Now I'm going to come over to the Layers panel and add a new layer. Note that we still have the t-shirt selected from our layer below, but on that new layer, we're going to create a clipping mask by right-clicking on that new layer and choosing Create Clipping Mask. Now I'm coming over to our Brush tool, and for this I want to choose a soft round brush, which is just in the general brushes in Photoshop. I want to make this quite a large size and the hardness is at zero and the opacity is at 100. I'm coming over to our colors to pick a color that I want to use. I'm wanting to use a purple color, so I'm choosing that. Hit OK. And now on that layer above our original figure layer, I'm painting that in. And as you can see, because we've created the clipping mask, it's staying nicely within the area of her t-shirt, which is what we want. I'm picking a second color now because we're going to do a bit of a gradient on her t-shirt. So I've chosen a nice pink color, again using my soft round brush, just brushing that in on that top layer. I'm choosing a third color now. I'm wanting kind of a pinky orange. And I'm just going to paint that over the bottom third of her t-shirt. That's looking pretty good. So I'll hit Command D to deselect, and I'm going to add another new layer above our gradient t-shirt layer. I'm going to turn that gradient t-shirt layer off so that we can see the original figure layer below. And with that newest top layer selected, I'm going to come and choose from our brush menu the hard round pressure size brush. This means that the harder you press when using this brush, the larger the size of the brush will be. So it allows you to get some variance in your brush stroke, which is really nice. I'm going to change the size to fairly small, around 17 pixels. And I'm coming to choose the color for this new layer that I want to do. And I want to use a nice, vibrant, bright blue color. So I'm choosing that from our color picker menu and I'm going to hit OK. And now what I'm wanting to do is use that brush to follow the edge of our figure's t-shirt. I'm going to change the brush size a little bit, but I think around 17 pixels is going to be good. So now I'm just following along the figure's t-shirt up on our new top layer. We're not drawing right onto our figure layer, we're drawing onto a layer above that. And we're just going to continue on and just draw around the edge of our figure around her whole t-shirt. And this layer is going to be sitting on top of that 
gradient t-shirt layer we made and it's going to act as an outline on top of that. You'll see when I reveal that layer again after we're done this part. So this is where the really fun part comes in where you're actually illustrating your image over top of your figure. And you can be as loose or precise in this process as you want. I really wanted this to be fairly loose and expressive, so I'm not working too hard to make this perfect at this point. I'm, I'm wanting this line to be quite vibrant and alive. Any mistakes you make along the way, just hit Command Z to erase, and then you'll be able to make that line again if you weren't happy. So now I'm just coming in and filling in some of the, the details of the t-shirt, like the seam lines, the folds on her sleeves, and some of the larger wrinkle lines along the t-shirt. I'm going to fill those in as well. And this is where that pressure size brush comes in handy because if you press lightly, you get these nice thin lines and then the harder you press, the thicker the line gets. So that really comes in handy for this portion of this drawing where we want some of the lines to be quite a bit thinner and more subtle than say the edge of the t-shirt where we're wanting it to be quite thick. And you can control that by how hard you press. And again, you can decide on how much detail you want to include or leave out as you're doing this. I think somewhere in the middle is nice. Detail without going too far. It doesn't need to be hyper-realistic, obviously. That's looking pretty good. So now I want to zoom in even closer and make my brush size quite a bit smaller because I want to come into that collar and add some really small subtle lines to mimic that lined effect on the collar of the t-shirt. So again this doesn't have to be perfect but You can always hit Command Z if you don't like any of the strokes that you've made and that will give you another chance. So I've created a first set of lines then I'm coming back in and doing another set of lines in between the ones I've just made just so we can get a lot of teeny tiny lines that mimic that ringed collar effect. That's looking pretty good. So now I'll turn back on that gradient t-shirt layer that's underneath our blue line layer. So you can see how that blue line layer sits on top of that nicely. Now I'm clicking back on our original figure layer, choosing our quick selection tool again. And this time I'm wanting to select her jeans and her belt. So I'm just dragging that quick selection tool over that area until everything's selected. And again, you might have to go in and refine some of the selection after your initial selection to pick up any areas that were missed. 
or areas that were included that you don't want. Now I'm adding a new layer again above that original figure layer with our selection still selected, creating a clipping mask by right clicking on that new layer and hitting create clipping mask. And now again, we're coming over and choosing our brush tool. Again, we want the soft round brush hardness at zero and we want to size it up quite a bit and our opacity is at 100. We're going to choose a color for the jeans. So I'm wanting something that's sort of similar to the jean color, sort of a bluey green, but we're not wanting it to look completely realistic or natural. So just somewhere in the ballpark. And now on that layer that we've created, that's a clipping mask layer, we're just going to start painting in that color. I'm going to choose another color because we want a bit of a gradient on the jeans as well. So now I've chosen a bit of a sea green color and I'm going to paint just the top part of that jeans area to get a bit of a gradient. I'm going to refine that a little bit with a different greeny blue color. Working back and forth with gradients is sometimes really useful to really create a soft, believable transition between colors. You can also reduce the opacity at this point to really get a nice blend. But that's looking pretty good. So now I've hit Command D to get rid of our marching ants to deselect them. I'm going to add another new layer on top of our jeans gradient layer. I want to be sure that this new layer we just created is actually above the clipping mask layer we made for the pink gradient part of the t-shirt. So I've dragged that layer up and right clicked on it and chosen release clipping mask. So now it is above the pink gradient layer and therefore free of being a clipping mask. Now I'm choosing our brush tool. And again, we're choosing the hard round pressure size brush. I'm coming down to choose a color and we're doing the outline of the jeans right now. So we want something that's a bit darker than the, the gradients we've chosen for the jeans. So I'm choosing kind of a dark greeny blue color and I'm hitting OK. I'm going to change the size down to around 15, 17 points. And we're going to zoom in and on that new layer that is above our jeans gradient layer, above our shirt gradient layer, we are drawing the outline of the jeans area. And we've hidden the jeans gradient layer for the moment so that we can see the original figure layer and be able to create this outline at this point. So again, this part doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, for the effect we're after, it's better that it's not entirely perfect. So just have fun with this portion and do your best to follow the outlines, but again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Choose however much detail you want to include. 
I'm basically just following any of the lines, the obvious lines that I'm seeing in the jeans and the button area as well. Again, hitting Command Z anytime you make a line that you don't like will erase that so you can try again. And that's looking pretty good. We'll turn the gradient jean layer on again so we can see how that's looking. We still haven't dealt with the belt, which we're going to do next. And to do that, I'm going to do another layer on top of our jean outline layer. I'm going to choose an even darker bluey green color to draw our belt with. Or I'm actually choosing a white color for this. And on a new layer that's above our jean outline layer, we're going to do our belt outline layer. And we're wanting this on a new layer just because we're using a different color and we might want to change that and change only the belt color as you'll see. So it's helpful to have that on its own layer. So again, just following the outline of the belt that we see on our original figure layer. Zooming in really helps with this part so you can really get those details. to make the brush size a little bit smaller for some of these more detailed areas around her buckle. And then an even smaller brush size to do the rivets on her belt. Again, using Command Z to fix any strokes that you don't like, to go back and to try that line again. And that's looking pretty good for the belt. So now I'm going to turn on our gradient jean layer again. And I'm not really liking how that white outline is looking. It's just not as visible as I would like it to be. So I'm going up and I'm choosing that white outline belt layer I'm adding a new layer on top of that. I'm creating a clipping mask. You can do that by holding Option and clicking on that layer or right clicking and choosing Create Clipping Mask. I'm choosing our brush tool and I'm choosing this soft round brush tool. I'm going to choose a darker color now. Instead of the white, I'm thinking the belt will look better if it's dark. And then on that clipping mask layer, I'm using our soft round brush tool and I'm just brushing over that belt area. And then because it's been made into a clipping mask layer, it only paints where those lines are on our belt outline area. I'm trying the white again because I'm not totally sure, but no, I don't think the white looks good. So we'll go back again and paint over that one more time, again with a darker color, which I think works much better.
now I'm coming down and clicking on the background layer and then adding a layer just above that background layer. So we're going to start working on our background now. I'm choosing our brush tool and our soft round brush tool again. I'm sizing up the brush quite a bit because we're wanting some pretty big strokes for our background. And now I'm going to choose our first color. We're doing a gradient background. I'm going to try a nice vibrant but dark blue. Or actually a vibrant but dark red. And I'm going to start painting that background behind our figure. I'm going to choose the second color of our gradient, which is a kind of sherbet orange color. I'm going to start painting in that middle area of our background. And now I'm choosing the third color of our gradient, sort of a, a sunny yellow color. And I'll paint that top third in. I'm going to add another layer above that background layer, background layer we just painted. I'm choosing our brush tool, and this time it's a hard round pressure size brush. I'm going to bring that size down quite a bit because we're wanting to paint in some, some detail. I'm choosing a dark blue color for this part. And I'm just going to be painting some horizontal lines in. So this is on a layer above our gradient background layer. Again, I'm not wanting this to be perfect for this illustration style where after it's, it's, the imperfections are kind of nice. So you can do this part fairly quickly Again, using Command Z to erase any lines to give yourself a second chance at them. And what I'm doing here is I'm wanting to emulate the brick wall layer that was in our original image, if you remember, but I'm wanting to do a really loose illustrational style version of a brick wall. So again, very loosely interpreting what a brick wall looks like. Then you can get really fun with the backgrounds with this style. You can really paint in anything you want behind your figure. Okay, so it looks like we have our illustration brick wall built now. I'm thinking I might add another layer here well, where I'm going to choose white as our color. I still have our hard round pressure size brush picked, but now I'm upping the size of the brush. And now I'm just coming in, painting in some cloud outline scribbles, if you will. And I, again, I'm doing this on a layer above the blue brick lines. So this will be on its own new layer.
I'm thinking I might change the colors of our gradient background. So I've created a new layer on top of our original gradient background and I'm going to try a new layer with some different colors for the gradient. I'm keeping that original layer in case I don't like the new one and we can just easily go back to that. So for this new gradient I'm going to choose purple as my first color. I'm going to use our soft round brush tool and we're going to size that up quite a bit. And I'm just going to start creating a different color of gradient. For our second gradient color for this new one, I'm choosing kind of a hot pink for the middle part. And then we're going to kind of keep this red color for the bottom third. I've reduced the opacity a bit so I can do some passes where it just helps to blend in between the transitions. Again, effective gradients really are a matter of tweaking back and forth, reducing the opacity for the final few passes to get a really smooth transition. Now I'm choosing the hard round pressure size brush again and taking our size down quite a bit and I'm picking the layer with our white cloud scribbles on it. I'm just wanting to add a bit more details to that layer with a smaller brush. So I'm coming in and making some squiggles to add some detail to our illustrated clouds. <clears throat> just to add a bit more interest to that layer and even making some new cloud shapes with our new smaller brush. Again using command Z to get rid of anything I don't want to give it another go. I'm looking again at our new gradient layer. I'm liking the colors, but I'm thinking I want to change the order of the transition so that there's more contrast between the t-shirt and the background. They're quite similar colors at this point, so I'm wanting to do something about that. So I've chosen our red color, and I'm bringing that up behind the figure, the middle part of the figure, and I'm liking that contrast a bit better. So now I'm going to go back in and work on the transition between the purple and the red. And I'm going to change the bottom color to the hot pink. So I'm just changing the placement of the hot pink and the red so that the red area is the one more directly behind her t-shirt and that just gives a bit more contrast to the whole image. And again just kind of going back and forth with this gradient to make our transitions nice and smooth. And I think that's working a bit better just to have some more contrast behind the t-shirt. I'm liking that. Now I'm thinking I might want to change the color of our blue brick lines. So I've created a layer on top of our blue brick lines, created a clipping mask on that new layer. I'm coming over to choose a darker color. 
So I'm still keeping it blue, but I'm bringing it down into a more navy blue. Again, because I think that blue of the brick lines is a bit too close to the blue we used for the outline of her t-shirt. So again, now I'm choosing the soft round brush tool, bringing the size way up, and on that clipping mask layer above our blue brick lines, I'm just painting in that new darker color. And as you can see, it just applies itself to exactly where those blue lines we originally drew were, which is the beauty of using a clipping mask. Now I'm wanting to add a bit of a drop shadow to our figure. So I've chosen from the effects menu, drop shadow. And now I'm playing around in the layer style menu to tweak our drop shadow a little bit. I'm changing the opacity, the color of the drop shadow, the angle, the distance, the spread, and the size until I see something I like. So really just eyeball it and look at the image and, and see what you like. I'm wanting this to be fairly subtle, just bringing her up from the background just a little bit. So we don't want a really obvious drop shadow here. Once we're happy with the settings, I'll click OK. Finally, I want to add an effect to our figure. So I'm choosing the figure image thumbnail, not the layer mask thumbnail on that layer, but the figure layer, the image layer. I've come up to the top, and from the filter menu, I've chosen stylize and oil paint. This brings up this menu where we can see a preview of some of the oil paint effects we can achieve on our figure. So really just play around with those sliders, with the stylization, the cleanliness, the scale, and the bristle detail. Try them all out and, and see how it looks in that little preview menu and just see what you like. I'm wanting something fairly subtle for this effect. I don't want it to look super brushy or really obviously like an oil paint effect. I'm just wanting to add a bit of stylization to our figure so that it doesn't look completely photographic in contrast to the illustration style. This is a really fun effect, so I definitely recommend playing around with this tool and just see how many cool things it can do to a photographic image. It's pretty great. So I'm wanting to kind of set everything in the mid zone. Once I've done that, I've clicked OK. And we'll zoom in. And as you can see, it's just added a bit of a soft oil painting effect to our figure. And I quite like that. So with that, we have finished our illustration style photographic digital collage. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned some new tips and tricks to try on your own projects. Please do let me know in the comments what you thought and please do also like and subscribe. That will help my channel grow. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you next time.